All right, my name is Manslave, and I run the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. Today is Sunday, December 16th, and of course, it my, like my clock says, it's 10.43 p.m. Um, I just got home from work a little while ago, and I'm going to do a sound check, because people hate that, and I just want to make sure my audio is really good. Uh, I just want to make sure everything's all good with my... Um, with my uh, with my with my levels and all that, just make sure it's not um, too high. And uh, I probably got to give myself a little more uh, a little more gain on the microphone. And <clears throat> um, all right. So um, anyway. There is a um, there's a problem with a YouTube user by the name of Never Been Pwned, and they're like, okay, they're they're not like anybody who comments. Okay, you'll see a lot of um, well, let's look comment section. Okay, um, other seed is a little bit annoying. Uh, Cult of the Old Gods has been very annoying, but tolerable. Um, you know, it, it would verge into what some people were, would regard as harassment, but I told the dude that, you know, he was on the verge of getting blocked and then he, he calmed down and for the most part kind of left me alone. You know what I'm saying? Like he's still on there. Um, you know, what, what, what got on my nerves about cult of the old gods is he, you know, it kind of, it kind of gets into bullying. Now, saying, saying annoying things is not really a problem to me because, I mean, we all know I say annoying things, okay? So it's this universal standard that's tolerable, okay? Um, now, sometimes people get on my nerves because they are so freaking off topic. I mean, whether or not they're saying anything bad or harmful, you know, even if they're not saying anything that, crosses the line of decency if they're going to be so profoundly off topic then it's counterproductive and then they don't really need to like really be commenting to me that that's one issue um now um some of these comments have been you know, very, um, desirable, they've been, um, you know, what, what I like, okay, um, you know, I get comments from, um, oh, yeah, Femetheist, and she's all right, I mean, you know, we've got differing viewpoints, and honestly, some of her, her viewpoints get on my nerves, and, but lately, she's just been really nice, and just, I mean, even when she's being negative, it, it makes me laugh because this comment where she says, uh, what was it here? Oh, I didn't want to go to her page. I wanted to go to the comment. Um, uh, oh, okay. Well, she's uh, she's actually been saying some nice things like there are some pretty cool stuff. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, there's a lot of messages from her and we're actually not even talking about issues really it's actually been talking about you know software technology and all that so you know i mean it, it's kind of off topic you know from from like gender issues but that that's it. well actually i started that conversation because it's like i was asking you know, what software do you use to edit your videos? Well, although it's not relevant to gender issues, you know, it's still, you know, like, like almost like personal advice kind of recommendations, you know, it's like, you know, what software to recommend to get what type of video effects and how and what file formats you'll handle and, and, uh, all these kinds of things. So, you know, it's cool. Um, but now, um, uh, Cult of the Old Gods has pretty much left me alone, and that YouTube user is, for some reason, still subscribed to my channel. Um, if that's what they want to do, then, you know, that's fine. Now, Never Been Pwn, uh, that person recently subscribed to my channel, and, uh, 
that's where I'm going to get to this uh, because Never Been Pwned has never, that I can remember, has never been pwned, um, has, um, has never really offered anything um, legitimate. They say, you guys are manginas, you should go pet some. Well, this person doesn't know what pet some means. Um, so I say, you should definitely go pet it, but you won't. You'll just hate it. And then, so Never Been Pwned says, shut up, you filthy homo mangina. That's crossing into the gray area of what can be, t of what I'd tolerate. And so I ask them, it's like, do you want to be the subject of an upcoming video? They say, you haven't got the balls to make a video about me. I've never been pwned. Uh, go pet some, your boyfriend. Well, this person, like, I said, why do you want this so badly? You don't even know me or what drives me. I'm not even going to warn your arrogant ass. So, this dipshit says, you know, never been pwned, says, You threaten me, mangina boy. I don't care if you put me in a video. Go pet some manslave, you homo. Okay. Well, that's just just really, um, you know, getting on my nerves. You know, if somebody told me I was wrong or stupid for having my views, you know, that that's one thing. It's it's in the realm of acceptable stuff. Or, you know, as annoying as it is for people to say that I hate women, because actually I don't really hate women, um, I don't trust them. So in, so in this gynocentric society, you know, it, it's like if, if you don't do something that fucking like strokes the ego of a woman, then somehow you're not any good to society, you know, like they, they might not think you're harmful, but like you're of no worthwhile benefit, you know, apparently according to, anyway. Um, Mr. Vampire Lover 56th. Uh, or 56, you know, seems pretty cool. <laughs> Dr. Claus, Southern accent. They, they just comment. And, um, okay, never been pwned, you know, just because your man, Johnny, just keeps, like, fucking trolling my shit. And, uh, it's getting, uh, it's getting really old. It's getting about as crusty as their underwear. And, um, um, let's see. Now, um, here, here's where it starts to really get bad, and this is where it really, it really starts to get um, um, intolerable. When they say, "Why don't you shut the fuck up and go pet some?" All they do is just tell me to shut up, fuck myself, and, and pet some. This dipshit, I assure you, does not know what pet some means. It's almost like it's it's almost like it should be trademarked, and it is an exclusive phrase of me and the disposable human doing. Now, there's some other dude on YouTube, um, and I put these um all these in here. They're pretty easy to add through the Minecraft project. Now, if you look on YouTube for pet some, you come up with this dude right here, but um. Yeah, actually, Peter Summerill, um, so it makes sense, you know, it's just a poor man toe or whatever of his name, which is, okay, you know, whatever. And, um, now, uh, I told this dipshit, um, uh, you know, 12 hours ago, I said, you got some things coming to you that you've earned, and therefore, I'm not going to keep you from receiving them. Your comments are irrelevant. You simply don't offer any substance. You are simply a troll. And this dumb fucker says, You got some spunk coming to you that you earned. Once I... F here, here it is. You got some spunk coming to you that you earned. Once I find you and rape your chubby ass, you fucking mangina. I am not a troll, you dumb fuck mangina. You really should go pet it. So go pet some, you gay manslave. 
Now, I said, and replied to the person, it's like, you are the troll. I said, saying that you're going to rape someone is completely inappropriate. You're done now. Name calling is an acceptable standard that even I do. So it means it's tolerated. I mean, it's annoying, but it's tolerated. But saying that you're going to use sexual violence, which rape is, against someone will not be tolerated. Um, um, now, 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 here's an example of what somebody would regard as, as annoying and crossing the line of decency, but I enjoy it. This is where Femetheus, what we call Dr. Claw, she says, I don't really need to see the audio check and stuff. Please edit the damn videos. <laughs> Actually, the disposable human doing, he, he did an impression, an impersonate, or an, an impression of her, or impersonation. He says, he says, please edit the damn videos, gadget. <laughs> and she said, uh, Prometheus, she says, I can't be bothered to sit through an hour and a half of this. You know, please edit the damn videos. Well, actually, I enjoyed that quite a bit. And uh, I've voted that up um, more than once, I believe. I think this is the third time I vote, I've voted it up. And, um, you know, somebody would regard that as something negative to say to somebody. But I think it's actually funny. <laughs> it's just, it's like today when I was at work, and I'm looking at my thumb right now. I was folding up a treadmill for somebody, for some old guy, you know, like he had me test it, so he had to unfold it and then power it up and walk on it, show them that, you know, that it does what they want it to do. And then I was folding it back up, you know, to stand back up and just how it's supposed to be. Well, the thing freaking folded up on my thumb. I'm looking at this, this, well, the skin between my thumb and my, like, the rest of my finger it was just ripped open and it was bleeding, you know, and all that. But this nasty blue mark on my thumbnail uh, toward the skin where it hit. But whenever it happened, whenever this thing closed up on my thumb, I just kind of lost control of what I said. And I'm like, fuck! <laughs> like, not real loud. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, out loud. And uh, I'm like, fuck! <laughs> said kind of, kind of loud. You know, so it's just kind of funny when you hear those kind of things. And, uh, uh, pull out sand is pretty cool. Um, but, um, you know, Femetheist, uh, Femetheus Reborn, that's her channel name, but she calls herself the Femetheist, you know, as a person. I actually subscribed to um, to her channel recently. Uh, I mean, really, I, I see her as kind of like you know the, the the kind of the kind of dynamic between me and her and our type of interaction. It, it almost reminds me of like Professor X and Magneto from X Men. Both see that there is a problem with interaction between humans, but they have different viewpoints and different methods for trying to come to a solution with that. Um, you know, the Femetheist, you know, she, you know, has a problem with rape. Uh, I'm assuming because I think she said something about that. You know, well, well we both agree that rape is wrong and, and should not happen. Okay, um, but me and the Femetheist have different, um, different methods of how we want to go about eliminating rape. Um, we both, we both view rape as something that is unacceptable and should not happen to anybody. As far as I know on her part, she doesn't think it should happen to anybody. I'm, I'm just assuming that. I mean, it does happen to a bunch of men in prison and it also happens to men in the Congo, uh, in Africa. Um, well, both genders get raped in Africa, and I'm sure other parts of the world. But, you know, like, supposedly women get raped in college, men get raped in prison. But men and women both get raped, 
but you know, women being raped is the only thing that is sympathized for. And then when a man is raped in prison, it's laughed about. You know, how many times have you heard "Don't drop the soap, motherfucker," or "Bubba's gonna fuck you in the ass." You know, I had to hear that. You know, like ever since I was growing up, you know, from teenage times and all that. And, of course, you know, it's regarded as something laughable when a man gets raped and all that. Matter of fact, in the 1994 movie, um, <clears throat> it's going to, um, oh, wow. Uh, uh, in the 1994 movie, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective... Um, you can, uh, well, I forget which part of the movie. I think it's toward the end. There is a, um, there is a scene where Randall Tex Cobb plays, oh gosh, what was that? Um, oh crap, um. Ah, Ray Finkel. And... Yeah, where, where is he at? Um, oh, crap. <clears throat> anyway. Um, it was, was it that movie? Or was it another one? Um. Oh gosh, he's been in a bunch of movies. Oh crap. Okay, maybe it wasn't Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Anyway, um. The the uh, the scene where they're in the showers, and he intentionally drops the soap, and he says, "Pick it up for me, would you, lover?" It's regarded as something fucking comical. <clears throat> whenever a man is sexually assaulted in prison, now we all know that sexual assault, when happening to women, is wrong, but you know it seems to be comical and laughed at whenever it happens to uh, men. Um. Uh, once again, we live in a gynocentric society and all that. Okay, well, back to the topic of how to eliminate rape. Well, the Femetheist, as stated on her website, um, she wants uh, castration day. And, um... All right, um... Does she got a search engine? Now, I've, I've actually seen this video, what she's talking about right here. Um, and it's a fairly good video. I mean, I subscribed to her. Actually, <clears throat> when she was making the video, she sent me a message on uh, YouTube, yeah, YouTube, and she told me that I might somewhat like her um, upcoming video, you know, or at least there's some part of it I might like. And I actually agree. I mean, she does make some good points. I mean, it's still you know, gynocentric, but um, um, but um, <clears throat> I mean, it's still from a gynocentric viewpoint, but it is going toward the direction of legitimate discussion. And, and and topic subject matter. Okay, and um, um, I see I'm not on this list right here, and obviously the Femetheus knows who I am because she sends me well, like let's see, yep, but she sends me messages and all that, and well, she says you know, she says I really don't need to see the audio check and stuff. I mean. What she's talking about is uh, right here, where I uh, where I do this kind of stuff. Check my audio sound levels, and in one video I do it like almost through the whole video, <laughs> and it's probably what she's talking about. Okay, so she knows who I am, but yet 
she doesn't put me on her misogyny list. Now, I don't know if she's going to watch this video, but, like, I think I belong on that list from her viewpoint because I, because I make videos like this. Predator behind the doll face. Female nature revealed. Um, and honestly, I don't hate women. Uh, never did. But, um... Uh, well, look, and I make videos like this. Elite MGTO can reveal the inherently toxic female of feminism. And, um, you know, so, um, oh gosh, what up? Um, plus, look, I list Barbarossa on here as featured channels. So does Stardust, I list Stardust on there, Girl Writes What? And... These people, Girl Rights What and Barbarossa, they're on her priority or priority overload for um, you know, misogyny list. And I feel like I should be on that list, but no, she won't put me on there, apparently. At least not yet anyway. But yeah, um I, I make videos titled Feminism and its Sociopathic Behavior. Um just all kind of stuff, you know. I figured that, look, poop mouthery and dating. I figured that I would be on this misogyny list, but um, I don't know. We'll see if it happens. I mean, like, I'm actually surprised that I'm not on there. <clears throat> um, okay. Um, now, the Fometheist, um, she, um, yep, she wants International Castration Day, um, and yeah, uh, from, you know, uh, one of her rad fem friends, you know, radical feminist, uh, which she says in one of her first videos on her YouTube channel that she's teamed up with Radical Hub, um, See if it's on Wikipedia. Might tell more about it. Um. Well, is it not on there? Oh gosh, come on! It's gotta be on there. Well, here's radicalhub.com should be .org because it's more like an organization instead of like a company. <clears throat> and, um, well, there you go, right there. Girl power right there. Um, this is a website of uh, Radical Feminist. Yeah, rad fam. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so anyway, um, yeah, rad fems. What about the man now and then? Oh, um, anyway. So there's Radical Hub. Uh, I just closed that tab. Now, like, what Fometheus wants to do, apparently, to, um, um, to eliminate rape from happening is to, um, so it, it, what she wants to do is have International Castration Day. Um, where she um, basically thinks that men all around the world should be castrated. Yeah, it's just compulsory, you know, without, um, you know, anybody's consent. <clears throat> anyway, um, so that's what she wants to do to eliminate rape. Um, well, I got my own agenda. 
Yeah, it's called Elite Migto, and it is a profound version of the men going their own way philosophy, but on a large scale and um, much more dedicated. And it, like, rape won't exist because no guy would take interest in a woman. I mean, you know, it, it's not a promotion of homosexuality. It's just basically friend zoning on a massive scale and abstinence. Yeah, basically. You know, I mean, how can a girl, how can, yeah, how could a girl be raped if no guy even, if, if no guy even wants to be in the same room with her? I mean, like, how can a girl be raped if no guy is willing to even make physical contact with her? You see what I'm saying? Like, basically, guys will just ignore women. That's, that's what my goal is. That's what my plan is. Um, you know, keep it to just the most simple interactions. Uh, just enough to perform, you know, a task at work or whatever, or customer service, but, you know, no special attention, no, um, uh, no affection, definitely no sexuality, um, no dating, and just for men to understand that the juice is not worth the squeeze, and that's a phrase that I borrow from Stardust. Um, he may have, you know, Stardust may have originated it, or he may have borrowed it, but I got it from Stardust. Um, yeah, and that's my goal, because, I mean, you know, women say they want space, give them space, and watch how pissed off they get, you know? Well, well he does, he just doesn't care for me, well, his priorities aren't right, and, uh, mar, mar, and he, he cares more about his job than he does me, hmm, I'm tired of being second rate, man, he just don't know what he could have had, man, man. And all this stupid, pathetic crap. And just, what's wrong with it? All you're doing is letting them live their life without your involvement, you know? Um, I mean, they might not like it, but at least it's not harmful to them. <clears throat> That's what I'm calling for. And, uh... Yeah, and then maybe a bunch of these false rape accusations won't be happening anymore. Or the false sexual assault uh, allegation, like what happened to the disposable human doing a month ago. And, um, yeah, where some chick was fucking flirting with him for how, however long, rubbing her ass on his groin, all kind of other stuff, and then when he touches her ass, she makes a big fucking fuss about it and tells everybody that he... Well, not exactly tried to rape her, but, you know, um, you know, was, was sexually assaulting her with his hands and all that kind of stuff, you know. And then, oh, well, a few weeks later, she shows up at his house uninvited to drop off a cat that she didn't want. So if she's really afraid of him, you know, and afraid that he's going to rape her or some shit like that, then why is she showing up at his house uninvited without his knowledge? She didn't even call him to let him know that he was that she was going to be over there. So anyway, so anyway, Femetheus, you know, um, has actually been more polite and cordial toward me than I think my comments would <laughs> would have gotten me. Uh, but, you know, that's cool. Um, and maybe the Femetheus and, and, you know, and myself will team up to <laughs> fucking pwn the fuck out of Anita Sarkeesian, especially for running off with all that money. You know, $160,000, I'm sure that the, uh, donors are not very happy with that, you know. She did promise them, like, uh, you know, a big video series called, um, Tropes versus Women or something like that, um... And, um, um, I don't know why Bayonetta keeps coming up, but, uh, oh, Sarkeesian, oh, such a bigot, such a bigot. And, and supposedly, Femetheus can't stand, um, Anita Sarkeesian. <clears throat> uh, I'm not saying that she hates Anita Sarkeesian, but, um, 
Supposedly, uh, Phimetheus, uh, Phimetheus doesn't like Anita Sarkeesian very much and made a video recently about her, which I think was, you know, it was, it was good that she done that, you know, because she basically, you know, um, puts Anita Sarkeesian in the in the category of just being a, 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 a stupid nitpicker, which that's what Sarkeesian is. Um, and uh, see this this six months ago and Kickstarter, you know, for tropes versus women in video games. I'm sure she's going to add in, you know, tropes versus women in movies or music or just whatever. But this is Anita Sarkeesian. And when I first saw some of her videos, one of her videos, I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. She comments on um, video games and all that. And it's cool. And, you know, and, and, you know, I don't like a bunch of those testosterone and you know, different games like, you know, Call of Duty Black Ops or whatever. I'm never really playing, but I've seen other people play them. And, you know, I, I got tired of first-person shooters. I mean, every once in a while I might play them, but, you know, they do get a little bit boring. Yeah, I think this is the video here that I had seen. And I thought it was cool at first until she keeps saying... You know, all these testosterone-driven games, man, 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 like, you know, and just basically bashes men a whole bunch, and then, you know, she really started, you know, kind of get on my nerves. And I saw other of her videos right here. This one really pissed me off, Mystical Pregnancy, because she commits sacrilege by, you know, fucking, like, you know, like, basically the whole mystical pregnancy of the Virgin Mary with Jesus she says that it's, like, harmful to women and is just, like, hateful of women and all that. And, um, I mean, whether or not you're a Christian or whatever, I mean, like, well, actually, anyway, I'm not going to get into that topic. I mean, I'm not an atheist. I'm not on the bandwagon, but then I'm not Hallelujah Amen Brother either. And, um, but she gets... You know, she attacks religion because of how it portrays women. Um, she's a stupid straw feminist in this one. Um, and um, her videos, Anita Sarkeesian, her videos are well made. She's got good equipment. She's got apparently good software. She's got you know good uh, you know good stuff. It's just her attitude, and not just her attitude, but like, her viewpoint is so freaking annoying, you know? And, like, nobody really likes her. Like, um, she, um, well, she's got 4.2 million video views and 35.6 thousand subscribers. I don't know how long she's been on YouTube because it doesn't say here. But a lot of even a lot of feminists kind of get pissed off at her because they feel like she misrepresents them, even though they're like Anita Sarkeesian. Anita Sarkeesian is actually a stereotypical feminist, you know, quite the conspiracy theorist type. You know that, that everything in everything is degrading to women, and you know, st stereotypical feminist. You know, it's all about concealing female nature and dignifying. Uh, artificially dignifying women and all this other kind of stuff while actually projecting like negative behavioral attributes that are typically um, personified in women, but but projecting them onto men and that sort of thing. Um, so that that gets to be an issue. Well, anyway, um, um, yeah. Um, the Femetheist apparently has a problem with Anita Sarkeesian, which is the person that does Feminist Frequency. Oh, gosh. So anyway, um, which brings me to this little fucker right here. All right. What they're saying is totally illegitimate and not welcome and, like, is just not tolerable stuff. Um, don't get any new messages. Um, but yeah, this, this comment right, right here was really, you know, really getting on my nerves, but right here, 
right here. I once where where this person says once I find you and rape your chubby ass, you fucking mangina. That's not that's not tolerable. And it's not the kind of stuff I go around saying to other people. Lately, when people get on my nerves, I tell them to go pet some. And usually that shuts them up or something because they don't know what pet some means. So it just gets their mind moving a whole bunch and then they basically leave me alone. Um, and this person is a troll. They, they, uh, that's all they do is fucking pester. Like, fuck. Like, Cult of the Old Gods, I felt like I almost had to block that dude because he was just really, you know, he's, like, I guess it was he, but anyway, the person would say stuff like, you know, I gotta watch out for, I gotta keep an eye on you because I gotta watch out for them serial killers, and that guy annoying because it's all accusatory. But at least, he, you know, that person did not threaten, you know, uh, violence or sexual violence or whatever. You know, so, and, and then, I, you know, I told him, it's like, hey, you know, like, you're you're in danger of getting blocked. So, like, you know, they calm down, and they don't really say much to me anymore, and, and, you know, matter of fact, one of the more recent comments that came from Cult of the Old Gods, that user, I think I voted it up, you know, gave it a thumbs up, I believe, one of the more recent comments, so, you know, they're still in the realm of what's tolerable. Now, Never Been Pwned is not tolerable uh, because one of my rules is um, that no one must be harmed. Um, you know, like, no matter how pissed off I get at somebody, uh, violence is not necessary. I'm not even sure if I believe in self-defense, at least for myself. But anyway, um, you know... And, um, rape is probably in the category of sexual violence, and that's unacceptable. Uh, I don't believe in harming people physically. I'm, now, I'm all for getting on somebody's nerves, because after all, like, people do all kinds of shit to me. You know, I, I, I get sick of feeling like I'm the only person who, who actually works at my job, you know, and everybody expects all kinds of shit from me. And it gets on my nerves how supposedly only I can do all these other things that in reality anybody else could do. Uh, I'm tired of being people's fucking butler. You know what I'm saying? And, okay, another rule is uh, nobody should steal anybody's stuff. Nobody should break anybody's stuff. And, you know, of course the whole rape thing, you know, don't get in people's pants. You know, that's the rule I live by. You know, it's like... And, of course... I've, I've, you know, totally got intimacy issues because of all the fucking shaming going on from feminists and all this other kind of stuff. And how many people I know uh, got allegations against them, you know, especially recently in the last, you know, couple months. Oh, gosh, I found out, you know, yeah, ask a lady out on, you know, ask a woman out on a date twice, you know, because they didn't give you an answer the first time, and yeah, you almost lose your job for sexual harassment, so, you know, I'm tired of this shit, you know, I, you know, like, I, I, I guess I'm gonna have to start using silence now, because I, I originally didn't know what silence means, because I, did, I never used it, um, but I was told by somebody, an authority figure, that silence generally means no, and, uh, and because they used silence the first time, supposedly that means no. And then because I asked a second time, then that means I was, by definition, harassing them and all that, which is stupid shit. And um, the disposable human doing, yeah, I already mentioned what happened to him. And then one of his friends got a fucking rape accusation lobbed against him uh, because, I don't know, some chick was trying to get his dick and she got drunk and all that and... And he, he had sex with her or whatever, and she, like, withdrew consent and then fucking, like, uh, whatever. But anyway. Now, this dipshit right here never been pwned. Uh, they're, they're all full of themselves? I mean, fuck. Like, come on. Look at the fucking name. And it tells you right there. Look, they have no video views because they have no videos. Supposedly, they have one subscriber. And, um... 
whatever. But anyway, they're one of these people that won't contribute to YouTube. They they won't produce any videos or anything else. All they do is they make them an account just so they can fucking comment on people's shit. Um. Well, um. You know, I I really don't want to be a block bitch. Which is what Snake Pliskinus talks about. Um, now, because tradition or typically, you know, if somebody says something they don't like, like right here, um, like okay, see what the Fometheus says here. Please edit. Please edit the damn videos. There are people who are so fucking petty on the internet, and especially YouTube, or including YouTube, that let's say if that kind of comment went to them, they might actually block the person who made the comment. Now, I'm not going to block the Fometheist. I made that clear. You know, I said, don't block my, don't flag my shit, and I won't flag your, you know, flag yours. Because feminists are so fucking fragile. Uh, they're fucking so petty and nitpicky. Like, anything that doesn't fucking conform to what it takes to boost their ego, they get all fucking pissed about it, and they fucking block and all that. I remember some fucking incursion that happened, or, if I, skirmish, like, on fucking Facebook, you know, about sandwich comment. Well, actually, yeah, there's one picture, you know, um, this is like a while back, you know, where, uh, these feminists made up. They they got this picture of some dude give, supposedly giving birth in uh, in a hospital bed and all that. And it says, and he looks like he's in pain. It says, until you can do this, you can make your own goddamn sandwich. And I got really pissed. I'm just like, well, until you can fucking die on the battlefield and do this and blah 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 and all this other stuff, then you know, maybe you should earn your voting rights. <clears throat> and uh, like men had had to do during World War One. Oh, oh, that's right, the men that, like, didn't even have voting rights because they were under 18, and because of the, how stuff was in their country, you know, voting was still because of class and this and that. Mm. Well, it can still happen today. When I was in the Army 12 years ago, we had a soldier that was 17 years old, and the reason why they were under 18 and they were able to go in, well, like, they let you go in as young as 17 if your parents signed some kind of special waiver for you. And that's what this one person did, and so they were 17 years old. They were the youngest person in our unit, because we had a bunch of 18-year-olds and a bunch of 20-year-olds and all that. But, um, 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 yeah, so, you know, this person was 17 years old in the military. And because they weren't 18, they couldn't vote. And this was in the year 2000. And I'm sure it was especially that way in freaking 1915 and 1916 in uh, World War I. Anyway, so that comment got me blocked from, uh, what was it on Facebook? It was a, a, a page called, uh, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Um, it was a feminist um, page. Um, fuck. Oh, it was... Um, Anyway, I forgot the name of it. But, um, yeah, and then, like, but you'd be surprised how much these feminists fucking, like, um, oh, it was called Feminist Ascension. Yeah, they'll, they'll block somebody. Matter of fact, somebody criticized me, said that I was a shitty guitarist, you know, well, oh, I see, you. here's his name, he's a shitty guitarist, meh, meh, meh. And the person, criti you know, some dude criticized me. And then that person got their comment, you know, like, removed and all that. Like, basically censored. I'm like, damn. And what ultimately got me blocked from there is because I mentioned Valerie Solanas and how she was a hate monger that went around shooting guys. And I said this on a feminist page. And, uh, cause Valerie, Valerie Solanas was a feminist, a rad fem, probably one of the most hardcore of all feminists. Um, I mean, come on, going around shooting people, that's, that's pretty bad. Oh yeah, Valerie Solanas. 
one of the most hardcore of all rad fems, radical feminists. Oh, look at this. Feminism. Feminism wrote the Scum Manifesto. Um, yeah, a radical feminist who's best known for her, as- for her assassination attempt on the artist Andy Warhol. Um, yeah, if you ever read her, uh, Scum Manifesto, uh, it's pretty bad. Um, yeah, she, uh, really, really writes some negative stuff about men. Um, saying that, that, ma- that the male gender is a biological accident and he's a walking abortion and all kind of other stuff. Um, yeah. Um, let's see the shooting, yeah. Um, uh, let's see, um, let's see. Yep, and then, uh, yep, oh, yeah, the dude told her to leave. And threatened to beat her to beat the hell out of her and throw her out if she didn't go. Blah blah blah. Um, Solana shot at the Andy Warhol three times. First two shots missed. Third went through his left lung, spleen, stomach, liver, esophagus, and finally through his right lung. Uh, she shot Mario M- Amaya above the right hip, and then uh, tried to shoot uh, Warhol's manager Fred Hughes in the head point blank. Yeah, like actually put the gun up to his head and uh but the gun jammed um and uh yep shot two people um attempted to shoot a third which if she would have shot the dude in the head i'm pretty sure he would have died and for the most part pretty much got a slap on the wrist i mean compared to what she should have got and uh yep and, uh, all this other stuff, and, um, fuck, goddamn, she wasn't, she wasn't, uh, satisfied, you know, she, I mean, she fucking shot the dude, and all that, and she still wasn't done, after she was released from, uh, New York State Prison for women, oh, special prison for women, in 1971, she stalked Andy Warhol, and others over the telephone and was arrested again in November of 1971. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. That, and that's a feminist. That's one of the main people who influenced feminism and all that. And, um, yep. That's, uh, that's some dirty history on, uh, feminism. Of course, you got it. Anyway. Uh, what I want to get to here with Never Been Pwned. Uh, this person is, um, I'm going to block him. I uh, really don't want to be a block bitch I, because I don't want anybody to block me. But this person earned it for what they said right here. Once I find you and rape your chubby ass, you fucking mangina. Um, Yeah. So, what do I do? Um, no, I want to do something worse than flag a spam. I don't want to remove it. Well, the profile image, as far as I know of, does not violate any intellectual property. Um, what do I do here? No, that's not applicable. Oh, what do I do? Fuck, I want to report this person for saying this shit, because I don't go around saying that kind of shit, you know what I'm saying? Well, make sure I take a screenshot. And, um, hmm. Block user. 
Yes, I do, because they're being a dipshit. Now, this, I hope this is the only time, and I want this to be an example. I hope this is the only time that I, manslave, have to block anybody from the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. You know, feminists can say whatever kind of stupid shit, you know, um, or anybody can disagree with me and tell me that I don't know how to make videos or say that, that I'm a dumb fuck. But, you know, that that's annoying, but it's tolerable. And see, I want to make sure that I have the freedom to say whatever I want on people's pages and all that. Um, that's why I'm so tolerant. Plus, I got a high threshold for shit. But... There's a line of decency this person crossed. And I'm getting really tired of their shit. You see, I'm hovering my mouse right here over the OK to block this user. And I'm actually thinking about whether I should do it. I allow anybody to comment on whatever they want. But this is getting really annoying. Because it's the threat type of stuff. I, I, I can't support what this person, this person is doing because... Regardless of how much shit I fling on other people, I don't go around saying, you know, I don't go around using threats of violence or sexual violence. And I don't believe in doing that kind of stuff. It's just so much against me. Or I'm so much against it. It's just so alien to me. And so disinteresting you know it's it's so i'm so disinterested in it i mean I, I just totally lack interest in this kind of stuff of using violence or harm against people it's just not me so why well, i feel like i cannot condone what never been pwned is doing this is a straw that breaks the fucking camel's back i mean it breaks the camel's back here and i'm tired of this shit so your dumb ass has to fucking go, all right? Like, I'm serious, but like, you're you're fucking done, okay? Prevent this page from creating additional dialogues. We'll see how it goes from here. Alright, now I just blocked this dipshit. And I guess I'm going to leave their comment up or whatever as evidence. Um, I'm going to type this out. Keep a note, it's... 11.37 p.m. on December 16th, 2012. Here's the calendar here. Oh, and just in case... Well, just in case the Fometheus sees this, I'm not using Microsoft Windows, and I've actually been in contact with the Fometheus, and I've been encouraging her to get off of Microsoft, you know, stop using their products and all that proprietary crap because it's just annoying. And it just... Well, you know, if she's such a financially challenged, you know, poor, exploited woman, then, you know, she really shouldn't be spending her money on Microsoft and all that because, you know, well, she said she got a new computer not too long ago and it came with Windows 7 and, of course, it does because I, I got this computer like eight months ago and it came with Windows 7, but I got rid of Windows 7 on there after about a week and I just run Linux Mint. Um... You know, because if you notice, this does not look like Microsoft Windows. And um, here's my Windows programs right here. Like some of these, you know, they just run in Windows and all that. But I run them through Emulator. The Wine API Emulator. Uh, you can run 
quite a bit of uh, Windows programs through there. You know, programs made for Microsoft Windows. Um, crap, what else is there? Vir well, fuck. with VirtualBox right here, you can actually run a Microsoft Windows operating system inside of a program window. Like... Like sometimes if I have to run something in Windows XP, like like you know program for XP, I'll, I'll just boot up Windows XP within VirtualBox and um, you know, um, and run it. You can adjust like how much memory is allocated to it. Basically, it creates a virtual computer inside of a program, and then that's what the operating system and the boot times are awesome on there. You know, because it actually simulates a complete boot up. And uh, it's pretty good, you know. Um, I could run Mac OS in there. You can run, like, anything. Um, I've got some old DOS games. Run right here in DOSBox. It just emulates a virtual machine. You know, like, you know, it just emulates, like, a Pentium computer or whatever that has, like, I don't know, 16 megs of memory, or just whatever, and, like, a Sound Blaster video, or, I mean, Sound Card, Sound Blaster Sound Card, and, like, some v Super VGA graphics card, or whatever. Um, but anyway, just in case the Prometheus is watching this, you know, like, there's some good software, and it's all free. I mean, just, like, like, look, through, like, Crap, the uh, Synaptic Package Manager. Let's type in password for authentication. Just type in, you know, um, type in what type of, uh, what type of, uh, software you're looking for, it, it's de or the description, or the, um, the name of the program, um, You know, and just select the check checkbox. Um, oh yeah, three D video player. Oh, I don't have a three D monitor, so it don't matter. And all this stuff is free. Connects to an online software repository. And, um, yep, they got some good stuff. I'm going to look at ID3 tag emulator. Um, ID3, ID tag editor. Oh. Mm -hmm. Just select apply. Tells you what's going to be installed. Yeah, you know, tells you what's going to be changed or unchanged. Tells you what's going to need. Click apply. Of course, make sure you're connected to the internet. And it's grab. Yeah, it already grabbed all the files from the online so online software repository, which is just basically a server. It's got all kinds of software packages that are designed to run on your machine. And it installs them, sets them all up, and uh, and then uh, yeah, you might see I mean, like uh, uh, wait a minute, where I just I might have opened anyway, um. Let's do it this way. Um, I 
what I'm doing right here is getting the uh, Ubuntu Studio um, graphics package, which is all the so graphics software, anything image editing or anything whatever related, uh, which comes with the Ubuntu Studio. Um, and then I'm going to grab the audio plugins. You know, it's just a bunch of software that comes um, bundled with um, Ubuntu Studio. Um, any kind of stuff like that. Um, and then all kind of audio, you know, um, stuff like that. Um, oh, okay. And then what it'll do is I'll just grab it. And I got 20 megabit downstream on my cable internet speed, and I only got 1.5 megabit upstream speed, you know, going out from my computer to the internet. I wish I had, like, at least 4 megabit on the upstream. And, uh, you know, for uploading videos and all that. But this is a segment for the Famethius to see. Look at this. Um, yeah, it'll probably shoot up. Yep, 2.2 megabyte per second. Megabyte. Uh, there's a difference between bits and bytes. You know, there's metric and binary, you know. Um, there's, like, for example, I got 20 megabit. That's 20, you know, 20 million bits, and that's just a metric number, you know. And mega being million, well, you know, and bits being a single individual bit and all that, and that's how network transfers are done and all that, which the Internet is a network. Now, um... Now, once once it's in your computer, it's being registered as bytes, octets in a stream, because the smallest amount of data that a computer can even deal with is a byte. Um, you know, in terms of what it can process and this and that. Um, but anyway, um, so but you know transfers the actual pulses of electricity that, that equipment puts out as measured in bits, but in terms of software and your microprocessor and all that handles bytes. So, you know, a kilobyte is uh, one... Okay, a kilobyte is 8,192 bits because a byte is 8 bits, and then a kilobyte is 1,024 bits, so 1,024 times 8 is 8,192 so what it does is it takes a 20 megabit that's coming in from the from the internet and it organizes it into bytes, you know, so basically, you know, so the transfer is measured in kilobytes per second, so you take this number times 8192 and that's how many bits are coming through. Because it takes the total amount of bits and it divides by 8,192 and then it measures it in that. But anyway, <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't want to become a block bitch and I really hope that um, that uh, I don't have to do this again. Um,
is that? I'm going to post that, and then I'm going to go back to my channel. All right, no game. I see a bunch of my messages have been from the Femetheus, and we're talking about software and computers and blah, blah, because she does some video editing and all this other kind of stuff, and I was asking her what software she used for video editing because... You know, I, um, I'm trying to get back into it. Matter of fact, I got PTV right here. Um, I got Caden Live. Now, Caden Live is supposed to be, you know, Nixie Pixel says it's pretty much like, you know, the free open source alternative to Sony Vegas Pro, which is supposed to be really, really good video editing software, like, like what, what Hollywood use or what Hollywood would use, you know, that level of, of, you know, performance and software. Um, I'm not saying that, that Hollywood uses that. I'm just saying it's in the category of types of software that's good enough for them to use. Now, PTV is not, not for Hollywood. I mean, it's not anything professional like that. Uh, Caden Live is free. As far as I know, it's only on Linux. Oh, what other good software I got in here? Come on, pull up menu. This is a quad core processor running, uh, you know, three gigahertz. It's a, you know, second generation Intel Core i5. Come on, you know, you get the processing power. Well, right there, I am screencasting. Okay, so hopefully we're still good. Just reset my desktop environment. Okay, it'll do that occasionally. Video editing. Uh, at Vitamux is really simple. You just basically splice stuff. Um, what else is out there? Um, Caden Live is supposed to be like really, really good. Kino is supposed to be, you know, it's not bad. Lives is supposed to be kind of good. Lombard, I've never really used it. Don't really know much about it. I think it might be good. Open Shot is supposed to be kind of good, maybe. PTV, you know, is good for beginners. Oh, gosh. But anyway, now as for audio, you know, Audacity is really, really good. Good balance of, uh, you know, features. Very easy to use, like a VCR or a tape player. I mean, it's pretty simple. Anyway, you know, just kind of mentioning this because, you know, I think Prometheus needs to uh, get into some of that software and anybody else. Me and the Disposable Human Doing, we just use... um. All my subscribers went down because uh, uh, never been pwned. Uh, they're not on there anymore. I blocked them because they're dipshit. And um, Cult of the Old Gods, that person's still on there because they backed off. They didn't want to get blocked, you know, and they made a wise choice. So, you know, I don't know if I can say all is forgiven, but, you know, all is tolerated, you know, right now. <laughs> Um, i tell you, one of my most valuable subscribers. Oh, yeah, look at this. List of people who subscribe to me. Who do I see right here? Barbarossa. Oh, man, I, I feel privileged. Because Barbarossa is, like, totally awesome. And, uh, oh, yeah. Barbarossa, he's, he's really good. I like him quite a bit. And um, Man, Woman, Myth is amazing. Girl writes what's really good, so is Stardust. Yeah, start, they're pretty good. So anyway, um, yeah, so I lost a subscriber, which has never been pwned, but that's, you know, not a loss because that person was dipshit and they're all freaking hostile and all kind of other stuff. Screen shoot. Uh, okay, and I got here, you know. What we do is we offer analysis and commentary from an elite MIGTO perspective. You know, MIGTO meaning men going their own way. Here's what I came up with. Validation warfare is the struggle between both the male and the female gender to fulfill ex existential satis to fulfill existential satisfaction at the expense of the other gender in a form of destructive competition because of psychological differences resulting through gender roles and cultural perceived perceptions of expectation. Uh, Emphasis on psychological differences. Um, and I, and me and the disposable human doing, we believe that's really at the very core 
of these gender issues and feminism and and the effects of feminism and all this kind of stuff. Uh, excuse me. So anyway, um, oh yeah, I'm post that in here. Yeah, okay. Just making sure, you know, comment now posted. Um, you know, the user never been pwned has just been blocked by me for saying, "Once I find and rape your chubby ass." Um. Some people have a problem with this right here. You know, the slave walking off the plantation. I think it's quite libera uh, liberating and relevant, you know, as a metaphor. But I plan on using, like, Thomas James Ball or something like that. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so so it's still visible here. Uh, never been pwned. Um so it's still there for everybody to see, you know, still my evidence that... Now, I don't want to be like Anita Sarkeesian and just, you know, block comment, well, like, you know, restrict comments because, oh, people say hateful stuff, man, man. You know, like, never been pwned. I seriously doubt they're going to come over here and rape me or kill me or whatever because they probably don't know where I live and and... Like, I doubt anything's really going to happen, but it's the point. You know, people shouldn't be saying that kind of shit. And since I don't go around saying that to people, you know, I got a problem with that stuff being said, you know. Now, it, like, you know, like where that person kept saying go pet some, that's fine. I mean, they don't know what pet some means, so they're just being an ignorant dipshit and, you know. And so I just say, you know, you need to go pet it. And like, no, you need to go pet it. No, no seriously, you need to go pet it. And, um, and pet it is nothing sexual at all. Um, it's actually, um, kind of an allegorical metaphor and all that. And, uh, I could tell people what it means, but it's actually funny to watch. It's actually more amusing to watch everybody misinterpret it and all that. So, you know, it, it, it's, um. You know, it's kind of like having my own whole, you know, allegorical, mythological, you know, explanation system of stuff. Kind of like how Freemasons do, which is actually pretty cool and all that. So, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like an homage to Freemasonry, even though I'm not a Freemason, nor have I ever been one. But I, I, I do like Freemasonry. I think it's pretty cool. Really fascinating. I've read some of their books. And their stuff is just, like, so amazing. The type of, like, intellectual ingenuity the level that they're on in order to come up with all this stuff. But I think it's great and all that. So I need to go for now. It's almost midnight and I'm kind of tired. So uh, I'm Manslave and I run the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. And um, and uh, I guess I'm signing off here.